Hey there, this is Elizabeth, the teaching artist for the Timken Museum of Art with another art tutorial for you. Today we're going to learn about atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective refers to the effect the atmosphere has on the appearance of an object as it is viewed from a distance. What that means is, is that the further away something is, the bluer or grayer it will appear because between you and that distant object there is atmosphere or air that is filled with particles that are reflecting the blue light ray from the sun. The sun's blue ray in particular is shorter than the other colors in the light spectrum and it breaks up when it enters the Earth's atmosphere. That blue color reflects off of those air particles which is why the sky is blue as well as the oceans. It's all about the blue light ray from the sun reflecting off air particles. So when you are making a work of art and you want something to appear far away, you will want to make it bluer or grayer with softer contrast. Contrast in this context refers to the differences in how light or dark something is. For example, in this picture, the contrast or differences in the value, and value is just how light or dark something is, is softer in the background. The contrast is less, whereas if you look at the foreground or front of this picture, you will see high contrast in value. Very dark values paired with really light values, which will make objects appear closer. In addition, the colors in the background will be cooler and the colors in the foreground will be warmer. Cool colors will be blue, green, and purple. Warm colors, red, yellow, and orange. Now that being said, it doesn't mean that you won't find any warm colors in the background and no cool colors in the foreground. It just means that predominantly the colors in the background will be cooler and the colors in the foreground will be warmer. All right, now with all of that information, we're going to start. This picture you're looking at right now is an example of what you're going to make today. But before we get started, I need to make sure you have all the art supplies, super easy, colored pencil, pencil, a ruler, and paper. And then here is the reference we'll be using. All right, first things first, do me a favor, take the ruler and draw a horizon line. At that horizon line, slightly above it and slightly below it, we're gonna be drawing the sailboat. The first shape is the body of the sailboat, which is a rounded slanted rectangle. On top of that shape, you're going to draw a rectangle, a small rectangle that's going to represent the cabin of the sailboat with another overlapping skinny rectangle for the window. I went ahead and shaded my window in because the horizon line was passing through it and it was a little confusing. Next, I'm going to take the ruler and draw the mast. Next, you will draw a diagonal line for the rope that attaches to the top of the mast and then the boat. Next, we're going for the mainsail. It's a triangular shape, but it's a little bit rounded. Please pay attention to that. Next, we're going to add little details on the back of the boat. Please just treat them like abbreviated rectangles and mimic the shapes that I'm doing. After that, we're going to create a little bit of texture on that sail by adding the horizontal lines. When you look at the picture to the left, you'll see what it is that I'm representing by those lines. Next, we'll go for the background. We're gonna draw those mountains or hills that are in the background. Whenever you're drawing, you always draw what's closest to you first and then the background after. You don't need to draw really dark, by the way. Go ahead and use a softer line when it comes to your background. I draw my lines a little darker than I need to so they show up in the videos. After that, I want you to add just a few details onto the boat. I added the little railing and some of the details that I can see in the picture. I don't really care what they are exactly, I'm just drawing shapes. Alright, so now we're going to start with color. The majority of time of this video is going to be spent with the color. Color is how you reflect atmospheric perspective. So what I'm starting off with is the blue. I'm following the colors mostly of what I see in the picture. I will take some artistic license with my colors and your colors are going to be different than mine because my set of colored pencils is going to be different than your set of colored pencils. 
What's important here is that you match the values that I choose with my colors, which means how light or dark my colors are. And it's also important that you match the temperatures of my colors, which means cool colors, blue, green, purple, and warm colors, yellow, red, and orange. So what I've got started here is I started with a light blue at the top, and then I went into kind of an aqua blue green overlapping the blue and then I started in on the lower portion of the sky with lighter values. I used white, I used a very light pink, and a very light yellow. Something that I want to note about the white colored pencil. The white colored pencil is great for overlapping color to help it blend together and kind of harmonize. Next, I've gone for the mountains. The mountains in the background are going to be lighter. You're going to notice that they're not going to contrast really drastically with the sky because they're further away. Remember, stuff that's further away is going to have softer contrast. But the hills more towards the middle ground of the picture are going to be darker because they're silhouetted because of the lighting effect happening. I'm also looking at the photo as a guide to what value, how light or dark my colors need to be. So in the photo, those hills that are a little closer to the sailboat are darker. So I'm going to press down harder on my pencil and I'm going to use more color. Next, I've moved to the boat and redrawn it. The reason why I redrew it is because I was losing some of the drawing as I was coloring in the background. So we don't wanna lose that drawing, so go ahead and trace over it. Then I've moved to the water. You'll notice with the water, I don't color it all in at once. I'm layering it. And you're also going to notice that the marks that I make are horizontal. You want to use horizontal marks so that the surface of the water feels flat. If you use vertical marks, then the surface of the water won't feel flat. However, when it comes to the reflection of the boat into the water, you can definitely use vertical strokes because that reflection is being cast in a vertical direction. Now, as you're continuing to watch me color this in, you're going to notice that I get darker in some areas and lighter in other areas. You also notice that I don't color in one section just with one color and make it solid. I let the paper show through in different areas throughout this layering process. The paper showing through in some areas creates reflected light that I will later put lighter colors on top of. Next, I moved into coloring in the boat. I definitely look at the reference and see that the body of the boat is fairly dark and the sail is somewhat translucent, which means I don't wanna color it in solid. I also wanna to lean towards warm colors on that sailboat so that it feels more close to me. Remember, warm colors come forward and cool colors recede. However, there are some blues on that boat because that boat is going to be reflecting that water and that water is going to be reflecting that sky. Now, moving on to the sail, you're gonna notice that I've started adding some yellow with the reds and then I added some yellow to the sky. If you look at the reference, you're gonna see where the sun is poking through the sail and parts of it are in the sky as well. I've used a little bit of artistic license in this part and made it a little more yellow. You can add any colors that you want that aren't in that reference as long as you stay with the value structure that you're seeing, how light or dark your colors are, as well as the temperatures, meaning warm and cool. However, irrespective of the color palettes you choose, you are gonna always be refining your drawing. So you're gonna see me trace over some of my existing lines sometimes to just bolster my drawing. I'm also going to be adding blue throughout, even with the sail, because the sail will be reflecting the water as well as the sky, so it's gotta have a little bit of blue in it. And then as I'm bringing this drawing to life, I'm going to be constantly looking where I can get a little darker, where I can get lighter, where I can have more pure color, alongside refining the drawing. And with the sailboat, you're going to be alternating between those warm and cool colors back and forth. The cool colors are gonna help darken things. The warm colors are gonna make it feel like the light's reflecting. 
That white pencil is also very useful in getting the colors to transition together or blend together nicely. So don't forget about that white pencil. Even over some of the dark areas, go ahead and put that white pencil over the top. You can use your finger to blend. And don't forget to get some of those warm colors into the water as they are reflecting the light. Now at this stage in the drawing, what you're saying to yourself or what you're asking yourself is where can I get darker? Where can I get lighter? Where can I get more detailed? And where can I find more saturated color? So we just hit some darks. Now we're gonna go for more lights with the yellow, more saturated color. Now it got a little bit muddy, and what I can do to fix that is take my eraser to erase away some of that muddiness. Now when I erase it, it'll not take the colored pencil completely off, but what it does is it lightens it up so the white of the paper starts showing through a little bit, which is actually pretty perfect. It gives that translucence effect. And I just keep coming back with that white colored pencil. It's super useful. I can't stress that enough. I'm going to use that white colored pencil throughout the entire picture, all over the background, all over the mountains, all over the water, some on the sail and a little bit on the bottom part of the boat. Notice how I'm staying horizontal with that water. It really creates the feeling of the surface of the water and it's irregular. Nothing is colored in solid. There's all these different colors transitioning in and out of each other. All right, let's take a step back and look at what we've created. Do we show atmospheric perspective in this picture? Yes, we do. We've got soft contrast in the background, mostly cooler colors in the background, and as we come forward, the colors get warmer and the contrast gets stronger. Thank you so much for taking the time to be creative today and to learn something new. Please share what you've made with us and be well and be safe.